Hi everyone! Today we have a new reading turtle video where we'll first have a chat about some books I've read recently while I show you some footage of me setting up spreads of them and at the end we'll set up the fourth quarter fall cover spread together. This video goes up a little bit later than usual, which I apologize for. We were traveling with my husband and I didn't have time to film this video before that. But honestly, I wouldn't have had much to talk about either. I only read three books in the past three months, which is not a lot for me. I actually fell into a bit of a reading slump, but gladly got out of it by now. I actually read a lot during the travel and in the end, I have some exciting books to share with you today. But let's start with the first one I read this time, which is the second book in the Crowns of Nyaxia series. I talked a little bit about the first book in the series last time, which is called The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I've seen this book all over social media. It's a new adult fantasy romance that has a surprisingly high rating on Goodreads, which made me very intrigued. I think last time I had just started the second book after really enjoying the first one. I wouldn't say that the first book is among the best books I've ever read, but in this genre, I thought it was definitely one of the better ones. It has a very clear storyline, it has a main character who's not too overpowered or who I didn't find annoying, it has good fun banter, the slow burn romance keeps you wanting to read more, and all in all, I was very pleased and very entertained by the first book. However, something happened with the second book and I'm actually really interested to hear your opinions about it too. I know many of you have also recently read these and I don't know, my opinion might be a little bit unpopular. So I actually only got around the 30% mark with the second book when I finally decided that I was just not interested in reading the rest of it. I don't know if it was a me problem, if I was just feeling extra difficult or something, or was the second book actually worse than the first one? I will say that I haven't had the best luck with this genre overall because I find myself losing interest very easily when the story and world itself is maybe not the best and a lot of the reading motivation circles around the love story. I also wasn't a fan of how things played out after the first book. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I started to get a bit annoyed by the characters, their decisions and so on, and I was just not excited to keep reading. I still gave this book a 7 out of 10 because I don't think it's written poorly. I have a very hard time giving low ratings in general because I think there's usually something good to be found in all books and I think if you love this genre, I think you will enjoy this series. I was just craving for something else and there are so many exciting books on my reading list that I just didn't want to waste time with something I wasn't super in love with. When it comes to this spread, I decided to use some of these washi stickers from this collection I designed with the washi tape shop to add a finishing touch to the decorations. I still haven't had the opportunity to show this collection on my YouTube channel, so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity. All the details and links to the products I'm using are in the description as always. But yeah, so that was what kind of caused my short reading slump. And because of that, I decided that I needed something potentially higher quality next. And I chose to pick up The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon, which is a book I've heard only good things about. This has been recommended to me so many times by you guys and funnily enough also by my parents and now after reading it, I completely understand why. I'd actually go as far as to say that this was probably the most beautifully written book I've ever read. The style is almost poetic but not so much that it makes it difficult to read. It just has the most colorful, uniquely told story that I absolutely fell in love with. 
I'll say that the beginning is a little bit slow. This tells a story about a boy who discovers a very rare book from this place called the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. And when he tries to find more information about the author, he gets thrown into this mystery that gets weirder and darker the more it starts to unravel to him. I felt like the whole story was such a strange mixture of being warm and wholesome and absolutely tragic and devastating at the same time. It has one of my all-time favorite side characters and the characters in the book in general were just excellent. It's a very difficult book to describe because it kind of has everything. It has a love story, a mystery, a growth story, and all of it is in the most beautiful setting of Barcelona in the early and mid 20th century. I would honestly recommend this to anyone. There are three more books in this series, but I think this one could be read as a standalone. I'm not sure, but I don't think the same story directly continues in the following ones, but I'm sure I'll eventually read those ones too whenever I'm in a need of something beautiful and poetic. I found a lot of pictures for this book online and I also had a lot to say about it, so I made this Dutch door layout to have a little bit more space. I also used some of the new products from my tiny bookshop collection over on my shop, which kind of went perfectly with the theme of the book itself. I think this ended up being one of my favorite layouts in my whole reading journal. I just loved the pictures and these vintage tones, and it was very fitting that it happened to be for a book that also made it into my favorites. But anyway, we still have one more book to go, which is very different from pretty much anything I've ever read. And this is the Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is a pure science fiction novel, which is not my typical genre, but it was something I wanted to give a go this year. And I'll start by saying that this book was not what I expected at all. I don't know why I thought it would be more like a thriller, maybe something serious and even a creepy space mystery of some sort. I think I got the idea from the book cover alone for some reason, but basically this was pretty much the total opposite of that. This is such a fun, wholesome book with a main character you cannot not like. It was also much more sciency than I expected, which I wasn't mad about at all, and I think it just showed how much research went into writing this. All in all, I think this is a very interesting story about a guy who wakes up from a coma in a spaceship, and he doesn't know who he is and why he is there. I won't spoil anything else because I think figuring out everything with the main character is a big part of the story itself. And this is all wrapped into this almost dorky style of humor, and I mean it in the best way possible, which makes everything very entertaining and surprisingly light, at least considering how serious the situation actually is. This made me laugh multiple times, and all in all, it was just a very enjoyable read. I feel like many book spreads in my reading journal end up with very dark colors, mainly due to the pictures I find for them. So this time I decided to use navy blue paper instead of black to change it up at least a little bit. I also used a few washi tapes from the Notebook Therapy Dark Academia set that added a bit of color here, but otherwise the spread ended up quite picture heavy again. But that was the last book I read this time. I almost felt a little bit silly filming a reading journal video after only reading three books, but hey, that's life. I hope it makes some of you feel a little bit better about your own reading goals, and I hope you still find at least a few new books and ideas from these videos. Anyway, now it's time to finally start setting up the fourth quarter cover spread. So on this one, I just had to use a few products from my own fall collection. It's still available on my shop when this video goes live, and I just don't have many opportunities to use my own products anywhere. So I hope you can forgive me for using quite a few of them in these reading journal videos. Anyway, I think I explain this every time, but I don't read enough books to set up a cover every month, which is why I use this quarterly approach instead. 
I'm always so happy to hear you guys like this idea. I think it's a little bit more realistic approach for many of us and I find that it also takes off some pressure about using my reading journal or always reading books even if you don't necessarily have time or feel like it. I feel like this three month cycle of reading and recording is much more forgiving than having to do this every single month. So if this sounds like something that would help you out, definitely give this system a go. But anyway, I wanted this spread to be very warm and brown heavy and then I printed the big fourth quarter title together with the rest of the pictures to give a very polished look to the whole spread. I also decided to play around with the overall layout this time, so I will include the TBR ideas list in the bottom corner instead of in the middle of the page as I usually do and I really enjoyed having some sort of reading statistics box in these pages that shows me some numbers that's always fun to track. <laughs> And when it comes to my reading ideas for the rest of the year, I really want to start with maybe one or two slightly spooky reads. I'm way too much of a coward to read actual horror, but I definitely want to start with Something Wicked This Way Comes. Many of you recommended this to me last year and I had no idea that it's considered a classic which made me very intrigued, so I think I'll start with this one. And then I listed The Silent Patient, which also seems like a slightly creepy psychological thriller, which is a little bit more on my alley. I've heard great things about this one, so I hope I get to read it too. But then next, I think I'll finally start The Mistborn Saga. I've been craving for a good old fantasy series, something where the fantasy and the world are a little bit more the main thing rather than only being fantasy romance and I've heard amazing things about this series so I really want to finally start it. Another great contestant is the Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas. This is her latest series and the final third book is coming out in January I believe so I think I'll finally start this one either at the end of this year or at the start of 2024. The same thing goes for the Firebird Chronicles. The last fifth book is supposed to come out very soon. I've read the first three books in this series and it's so amazing. I've desperately been waiting for this series to finally finish so that I can read all of them. This one is a sci-fi fantasy romance where the romance is a little bit more on the side and the story itself is the main focus. It's amazing. I highly recommend you to check it out. And then lastly, I listed two standalones, just in case I'm feeling for some easier romance. So the love hypothesis is a bit more contemporary, and the far horizon is the last book in the pirate historical romance series that I have absolutely loved. So there you have it. I'm so excited about this list and I hope I get as many of these read by the end of the year as possible. But other than that, please leave your own recommendations or reading updates in the comments. Reading them is my favorite part of making these videos. But I guess that's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.